Okay, now that we know what torque is, angular momentum and moment of inertia, we have all the tools we need to deal with things rotating at variable rates. There's a whole string of equations for this, but luckily for us, there's a perfect analogy between the rotational equations and the equations of normal linear motion, which we all know. Basically, in normal linear motion, we talk about position and velocity. In rotational motion, instead of position, we talk about angle, and instead of velocity, we talk about angular velocity, omega. Instead of a force in linear motion, we deal with a torque in rotational motion. Instead of the mass, we deal with the moment of inertia. And instead of normal acceleration, which is the rate of change of velocity, we deal with angular acceleration, written with alpha, which is the rate of change of angular velocity. And if we make those substitutions, basically replacing the linear variables with the angular ones, all the same equations work. For example, instead of force equals mass times acceleration, you have torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Instead of s equals ut plus half at squared, that's distance equals initial velocity times time plus half acceleration times time squared, you'd have the angle rotated equals initial angular velocity times time plus a half the angular acceleration times squared. Instead of kinetic energy being half mv squared, it's half i omega squared. So basically everything you really know about linear motion can be ported straight over to angular rotational motion just by making these substitutions.